you, thank you. Before we are done, you will know every word of the song. And the name of it is? Remember the code is? Yellow. And you will learn every word. So next time we meet, I'll take the music off and you will sing. Agreed? Thank you. It's a beautiful song. A beautiful... Coldplay, look, you know the name. That's the name of the uh, band that sings it. I thought long and hard. I wanted a new song I could share with you that you would enjoy. I know, you know, I like reggae. I like rockers. I like um, soft pop. I like chutney. I like all kinds of music. But this kind of music I like is, is, is I think it's soft rock as well. It's called, is that it, Dr. Bodo? Let me ask somebody who knows of music. Damien, Cole plays, what kind of music is that? So, soft rock. It is soft rock, yeah. So I hope we'll enjoy it together. And um, that doesn't mean we won't have others, but I think it is very important that we remember who we are and what we are and what we stand for. And we are what? UNCN? Proud. UNCN? Proud. And of course, our code is yellow. Thank you all. Thanks to all of you. The chairman of the Kuva Tabaki Corporation, Councillor Ryan Rampasad, who is co-chairing tonight. Councillor Brenda John, co-chair. Let's give her a round of applause. They've done a tremendous job. Let us also big up the speakers who came before me, MP Khadija Amin, MP Anna Ram, MP Dr. Rishi Sicharan, and maybe soon to be, now Senator Jillian John, maybe soon to be, MP Julie John. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We have a screening committee. So I don't make the final decision. The committee will decide. And of course, the other MPs are here with us tonight. Let's see who is with us. MP Ratiram, MP David Lee, MP Indar Singh, MP Bodo, Doctor, MP, former MP, Dr. Tim Gopi Singh. Glad to have you in your own former constituency. MP Dr. Munilal, Senator Damien, MP Dave Tanku, MP Padarata de Bak, and Rishi, of course. Let's big up Rishi. We are in Kerry, Kerry, Kerry East. Other officials who are here tonight, councillors, all the men, and of course, all of you activists come out in your numbers. I'm sorry the school is too small. Next time when we are building, we will build some bigger schools. What do you think about that? <laughs> to our listening audience, viewing audience, radio, TV, social media, and all of you gathered, I say a very good night to one and all. And um, the speakers before me have been tremendous and very powerful. I think they are sensing it, they are feeling it, they are tasting it, they are touching it. You know what I'm talking about? Victory. Victory is in there. Victory is in there. So it's a pleasure to join you here. We've been off the hustings for a bit. And because in the last several weeks, we were honoring the diversity that is our country. As we celebrated Shouta Baptist uh, Liberation Day. As we celebrated Holy Pagwa. As we celebrated Easter and has been observing the holy month of Ramadan. So we've been very busy attending the various uh, festivities, celebrations, and observances. I recently attended several of the iftars. I saw Dr. Munilal with a nice headwear in a mosque somewhere, attending iftar. Many others have been there. And so we come out of a very, very blessed time in our nation's history. And in this holy month, whilst this is happening here and we have this tolerance or this working together, harmony in diversity, bomb after bomb, tons of stone, dust, seem to want to fall into our living rooms when we put on our TVs. And behind that, what are we seeing? We see murdered children, crying children, hungry children, Children strewn across the street like the debris they live in. How on earth can that be right? 32,000 people have been killed 
since October 2023. Thousands are now starving. 198 workers were killed. New apartheid on top of recent apartheid, on top of more than 50 years of apartheid. Millions across the world have condemned this genocide that is taking place in Palestine, in the Gaza Strip. Millions around the world. Millions across the world pray to Almighty Allah that world superpowers would come to their senses and apply pressure for an immediate end to this war against the innocent. Children who don't even know how to spell the word politics are sure that bombing the innocent is wrong. I want us all tonight to just take a brief moment and reflect on how blessed we are in this land. In other words, we are not blessed, but in this tolerance and religious diversity, we have a blessed nation living together in harmony. And I share this with you because as we move out of the month of Ramadan, we go into celebrating Eid on Wednesday. Our brothers and sisters in Palestine and Gaza are suffering 32,000 persons killed in a wipeout, in a genocide. And our country has not said squawk or squat. Brothers and sisters are our own in Palestine. And our leaders in this land cannot say a word. Why? Why? Because they are lying to certain powers. And they are, oh yes, somebody just told me the, the answer. They have PIP. <laughs> On such an important issue. Yes, we are talking about crime elsewhere. But that is not just crime, that is genocide. They are wiping out an entire community of people, a nation of people. So let us reflect and take a moment to reflect on how blessed we are to live in this constitutional democratic republic of Trinidad and Tobago, where so many different religions can celebrate their sacred holidays back to back, and there is no disorder or religious conflict. We are a nation of great religious tolerance. Now, we may take this for granted, eh? But that is a very rare thing worldwide, you know. That is a great legacy of our foreparents. And we must never squander this gift of harmony and unity in our inspiring diversity. So as we prepare to celebrate Eid with our Muslim brothers and sisters on Wednesday, let us wish them uh, Eid Mubarak on that day. And of course, at the moment, Ramadan Burak for the next couple of days, but then we celebrate them on Wednesday. And that is a great thing that we can do in one month in our country, just within the space of a month, four major religious festivities. As I said, Pagwa, Shota Baptist Day, the Christians for Easter, and of course now, with the our Muslim brothers and sisters. I moved to another point. When JJ stood up here and she told us it's not a beauty contest, I was trying to tell her, JJ, if there was a beauty contest, you would win it. But you didn't listen to me. <laughs> you didn't listen. I think if there were a beauty contest, the yellow would win. The code yellow will win. Thank you so much. But she's right. It's not a beauty contest. It is about what we can deliver, what we can look at from our track record. And based on that, you know we have a track record of the best that can be offered in our country. Khadija spoke about the ABC report. The government has held on to that report, the 2024 report, for almost a month. They refused to lay it in Parliament. The report was submitted to the Prime Minister and the Speaker of the House by the ABC. Guess what? On what date? The 13th of March. I saw... Madam Robinson Reggie saying Kamala confused. Well, Madam, between the two of us, you are the one who is confused. I am very clear in my mind. I am very clear. I have the letter here with me from the ABC. The ABC sent me the letter, and the letter clearly said I'd written to them. I said, hey, listen, what's happening with this report? It's overdue. You have, within two years of your last report, and no more than five years you have to lay that report. In March of this year, that five-year period expired. They did not lay the report, so I wrote to the EBC myself. 
because the first duty is for the EBC to submit the report to the relevant authorities according to the Constitution, submit to the Speaker, and submit to the Prime Minister. As I said, I have that report um, letter here. They said they, sent, they submitted, the report is dated 13th March. And that report was submitted on the 13th of March to whom? Prime Minister and Speaker. So what foolishness come here coming out to say with that it's going to be the acting Prime Minister? It was on the 13th of March, your Carol was in the country. He left the country on the 2nd of April. Left on the 2nd, you hear a lie, boy. They are just lie, cry, and mama guy. That's the PNM. Lie, cry, and mama guy. Lie, cry, and mama guy. So this big woman, MP, who is uh, the leader of the government's business in the house, a very important, responsible position. We had people holding that. Dr. Munilal held that position. MP David Lee is now holding on the opposition side. Very important position that you must know what's going on in the parliament, what has to happen. So the constitution gives us that timeline. I spoke about the suppression of the report, holding the report, hiding the report on the 18th of March. EBC submitted when? 13th March. On the 18th, in a debate in the parliament, I said, where's this report? Why don't you lay the report in Parliament so that everybody, all parties, elections are coming, everybody will know the boundaries. Because see, those reports can come at the last moment and surprise everybody and shock you. So when you think you're going to fight the seat of Kearney East here and the boundaries are X, Y, P, and Q, they could shift those boundaries. They have done it before. They have done it in St. Joseph repeatedly where they shifted Strong UNCPDs out of St. Joseph, put them somewhere else where they wouldn't make a difference, and then pulling the PNMPDs into St. Joseph, making St. Joseph now a true marginal. It was a UNC seat because they shifted the boundaries. So you see why that report is so important that we, in prepping, in even choosing candidates, I may choose a candidate today. And then the boundaries have changed, and that is not the proper candidate for the screening committee to, to put in a seat. So we need to see the report. So I raised it. And then now, nothing happened. So I wrote the EBC, as I told you. And they said, listen, we have complied with our constitutional duty. We submitted the report on the 13th of March to both the Speaker and the Prime Minister. Okay. After that now, the parliament met since the 13th of March, understand this, eh? On at least three occasions. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> After the 13th of March. So, Prime Minister has this and Speaker. Parliament met when? Friday, March 15th. The 15th is when? After the 13th. <laughs> Meaning after they got it. <coughs> the parliament met again. Monday, March 18th. The parliament met again, Friday, March 22nd. And at no time, three sittings after, did the government ever admit that they had the report, nor did they lay it in parliament. It was only after I wrote to the EBC and I threatened legal action that an order paper surfaced. And said, so, Camille, if you don't know the order of business in the parliament, you better go and check your email, because I got my email. This is the order, people. It is dated when? Friday, 5th May. April. Friday, 5th April. That is Friday, Friday, Friday. Just when? Okay? So we got this order, people. And what is the number one item on the order, people? 24th. <coughs> 2024 report of the EBC on the review of constituency boundaries. On the hand name of Deputy Speaker. This is the order paper for the sitting of the 12th of April, which is Friday, and paper to be laid, the EBC report, only after we call them out. Friday night, I got this, you know, David, when did you get yours? F Friday night, MPs, when did you Friday night. So maybe Camille and Faris were both sleeping. 
And they wake up the next day now, and they didn't know that there is an old paper. What was there? No yes, it's a shameless. Because she said I had the unmitigated something, something, and I'm confused and nonsense. Well, you, madam, spoke absolute rubbish, total rubbish. And also, so did Faris Alrawi. So they didn't even know the order paper was issued. This item was in the order paper for laying on Friday, okay? Now, that's fine. So Friday we go on the 12th. The report will actually be laid. We'll actually get to see it. We just know that they're going to lay it. And then we'll be able to deal with the issues there. But it doesn't end there. They have to now set a date for the report to be debated in the parliament. They have to set a date so we can examine this report and look to where they seek to gerrymander the boundaries in compliance with the EBC. They did it before you remember the THA. Eh? When they get almost wiped out in THA, eh? what did they do? They increased the number of seats. Yes, from 12 to 15. They changed the boundaries and they still get wiped out. So they could try to gerrymander, but once you keep firm and you keep strong, we will get a victory. We will win. We will win. So boundary or no boundaries, we must do our work. We must campaign and we must be out there and educate persons as to what is happening. So this raises a very serious question. Apparently, like Camille and Faris didn't know that Rowley got the report. So one thing Rowley hide in it because he got the sense the thirteenth. Okay? He left the country when? Second second, second April, or so he told us. Um, so he had this report from the 13th, but both Camille and this girl, um, Faris, Faris, no, no, that, I, I apologize, that was a mistake, it was a mistake, I apologize, no, that was not delivered, it was not delivered, please, please, not delivered, both this girl, Camille, and Faris, um, in the same news day, they, they, they don't know, they just don't know, so, two things, Rowley, didn't even tell his own cabinet colleagues that he got this report. Or maybe he's deliberately hiding it, or maybe he was also sleeping and didn't, didn't open his mail to get the report. Very serious issues. I remind you of the 6-6 six, six deadlock in the THA. And um, I then said, when we did that debate, and I quote my own words from the Hansard of September 15, 2021, when we were debating the EBC report about the Tobago boundaries, THA. I quote, if the EBC is going to make up its own rules as to how it determines boundaries, then we on this side are not afraid to say that both the EBC and the PNM administration are undermining the rule of law and the democracy of our land. <laughs> Political analyst Professor Hamad Gami noted in his Guardian column published Sunday, March 31st, after, and I quote, St. Joseph, was significantly altered in 2004, in time for the 2007 general election, it became a true marginal. In its 2004 report on the review of constituency boundaries, DBC moved polling divisions 1045 and 1060 which were reliably PNM into the St. Anne's East constituency and moved them and placed them where? In St. Joseph. In St. Joseph. Let me remind you that in the past eight years, coincided with this government's tenure in office, the EBC has also established highly questionable reputation for acting arbitrarily and outside the rule of law in several other electoral matters. You recall that we had to take them to court on several occasions, and the EBC was found to have acted arbitrarily. If the Rowley government has once more, in this latest EBC report, which we see on Friday, you, if they've used, the PNM has used this influence to cause and to collude with EBC, to gerrymander and manipulate the boundaries, to enable a PNM win in the upcoming elections, this will be totally a contra our constitution, in breach of our constitution, in violation of our constitution, and the UN will mount legal challenges that we can with respect to this. I give you that assurance. Once we see that report, we will not lie down and take it easy. We are all a bit younger and older, 
and very much smarter now, much, much smarter. We will not leave them alone. We will not. So I'm calling the government to fix a date for, a report, for that report to be debated in the parliament at the earliest opportunity. Instead of doing their duty, I say this government repeatedly, what do they do? They lie, they cry, and mama guy. Coming back to JJ, and, and, and I think um, he just spoke on it to the Constitutional Reform Committee. JJ, you said they should invite me to get people to come. I will not go. I am of the view that the entire commission is a mama guy, a pap papi show, a ploy, okay? And therefore, I have no intention of giving it any legitimacy. We will not go. I want you to remember the amount of um, committees this government has set up. Yes? Committee after committee after committee. That's what they do. And um, they have a track record of what they call sham committees. So anytime something happens, what do they do? They set up a committee. And then you all forget. They think we forget. But I know some people forget. So they set up committee after committee. Can I tell you, since they came into office, they have set up about at least 37 committees. 37 committees. And, and, and that's what comes out of them. And not just committee, commission of inquiry. What has happened to the inquiry for the divers? What has happened with that? So many other committees. Let me share some with you. So that's why I'm saying this constitutional reform committee will get nowhere fast. I believe they're going to use whatever punchlines they get out of it to put in their PNM manifesto to practice their manifesto. You remember the roadmap to recovery? That is what they use for their manifesto and up to date. Not one car drive on that road. Not one thing has been implemented. Nothing has happened. Roadmap to recovery. Come back again. Mama Guy committees. This latest gimmick government has imposed on the population. JJ mentioned it. Imagine you go to the capital city of Trinidad and Tobago, Port of Spain. You know how many people attended? 21 persons on a Friday evening. Capital city, 21 persons attended. Not even their own PNM councillors or activists attending these things. Everywhere they go, there was another place they went and they got 37, if I'm not mistaken. So this is going nowhere. They don't intend for it to go anywhere except to come on a platform and say, we will do this. We will implement this, 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 and that. Vote for me, and this is what we will do. It's not going to happen. And I'm going to warn you now, the UNC will never at this time vote to abolish the Privy Council. Not at this time. I do not trust this government. We will not support that. And I have a serious matter with them, you know. The chairman of this uh, Constitutional Reform Commission appeared on a radio program recently. And while a chairman holding a consultation has to keep a neutral ground. You don't give your view. We all have views. But if you're chairing, what were you there to do? You were there to listen to the points that people were bringing forward, to listen. And on that radio program, the chairman openly endorse abolishing the, uh, the people council openly so you make up your mind already you trump and follow in suit for, for, um, AG who is his name now Amo or Limo you trump and Limo say move the privy council abolish it go to the CCJ and the chairman can you imagine that you cannot be chairing and you have already made up your mind so I would ask the government to reconsider. And I'll ask that chairman, I know he's a very decent human being, the chairman, respectable, decent lawyer he is. I think he knows what he has to do. He has to recuse himself. He has to recuse himself. So we are back to these um, Mama Guy committees, okay? So a puppy show, a charade, a gimmick, eight years on, going into nine. Nothing has come of them. I mentioned to you the roadmap to recovery, 2020, had election 2020, you all remember? Nothing happened from that up to today. The Constitution reform gimmick, as I said, will base their campaign, they will base it on 
place it in their manifesto. So I said about 37 committees and inquiries in eight years. Nothing has happened. Here are some of them, and you will remember, and you will add others to them. October 2015, they set up an Economic Development Advisory Board. By 2018, its head, Dr. Terence Farrell, had quit. He said they had a lack of resources and a lack of projects, pro a lack of progress. Remind me, is it Dr. Terence Farrell also on this Constitution Reform Committee? We're going nowhere fast. Spinning top in mud. January 2016. Early Childhood Education Review Committee. What has happened with that? Nothing. Nothing has happened from that committee. June 2016. Sandals Project Committee. March 2017. Committee to Investigate Petrotrin Operations. What became of that? Nothing out of that committee was ever done or implemented. You know why? They never said to shut down Petrotrin. Never said to shut down. Talked about restructuring and then VAPS. Like a thief in the night. While you were opening and closing your fridge door. All, all, all went out of Petrotrin. All, all, all. Gone. Gone up to this day. Committee to investigate Petrotrin operations. Then, July 2017. Cabinet appointed committee to oversee hunting in Trinidad and Tobago. Maybe the hunters were acting up at that time. So as I said, once noise started to make, committee. Put a committee, everybody shut up. A few months later, move on, on, moving on. August 2018, committee established to address street dwelling. That's 20, what, 18, you know. What has happened with that? Nothing. June 2019, Technical Committee appointed for the National Social Mitigation Plan. And today, where's that mitigation? So many people are starving. So many people can't afford to buy food. Children can't afford to get books, shoes. You can't get anything, social amenities in this country. You set up that committee since 2019. We are now in 2024 on social, National Social Mitigation Plan. And now PS people are suffering more than ever. August 2019, committee established to evaluate refinery bids. Another puppy show, another lie and cry and mama guy to, to, to evaluate refinery bids. Up to today, what has happened? How many years later? Petrotron is now what? Scrap iron. Scrap iron. Since 2019, you set up this committee to evaluate bids. Nobody came forward? Not true. I remember once um, in Parliament, one minister told us they had received about 32 bids, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. What has happened? September 2019, TNTech Committee to Probe Tobago Blackout. Barry, what happened? They're still probing? They're still probing TNTech Blackout in Tobago from 2019 to today because we got nothing back from that committee. April 2020, Probe into employers who don't sign social relief forms. What became of that? Nothing. July 2020. This is just before the August 2020 election. July 2020. Committee to probe depressed communities after protests. Well, the communities are even more depressed now than they were then in, in 2020. Again, fooling people like Ryan Mamagai, fooling people, election coming. Hey, we set up a committee to look after depressed communities. Nothing happened. November 2020, committee to guide government on port privatization. Another lie, Ryan Mamagai, to make you feel something is happening. Nothing has happened. 2021, Digital Transformation Advisory Committee. You know, this, you know, this thing, the more you read it, the more jokey it gets, you know. Digital Transformation Advisory Committee. But I remind me, there was a, a ministry that set up. What was the name of it? Digital Transformation. When we check the website for that ministry. <laughs> yes, but then we check again. I think they had two people. I don't know how many they have none, but I said there's still none. So, 
Digital Transformation Advisory Committee. By God, you hear lie? More lies. More and more lies. Say lie, crying, mama guy. April 2021, probe into Nikon blast. They believe what has happened with that probe. Still probing. Still probing. November 21, cabinet appointed committee to discuss credit union sector's future. What has happened with that? Again, nothing. February 22, committee to probe cause of a national response to island-wide power outage. Barry, what happened with that one? You remember the whole country blackout? They set up a committee and up to now, they're in the dark, they blackout. They're in the dark, they're still in the dark about what happened. They're in the dark. And what about the Daryl Smith report of 2019? Yeah. They sent him away. Well, they get rid of him. They sent him abroad, I'm being told. Daryl Smith report 2019. I mentioned the Nikon Blast report. What about a committee appointed to probe the press communities? I mentioned it, nothing. So all of this, and I mean there are more, over 37, and you may know some yourself. Um, <clears throat> I'm saying their track record is abysmal, dismal. Their track record is a zero, nada, zilch, nothing. So every time you set up committees, nothing happens. And this is going to happen with this Constitution Reform Committee. It's another pathetic PR gimmick. We'll just waste public funds in an effort to distract from the real issues confronting people in our country. Another propaganda stunt to involve the colonialism bogey. And they're saying, look, look, let's get rid of this. Um, because you know why? That's colonial and stuff. Let me ask you something. You may not know this. Two presidents of the CCJ had to be admitted as counselors to Her Majesty's Privy Council before they took up the job. So why they didn't, why you want to get rid of the colonials? Why you're taking Privy Council status from these people before you went to sit in the CCJ? I won't even speak to that, so I will not call the names. But it's a kind of hypocrisy and double standard that the country must get rid of the Privy Council, but these fellows had to go and get themselves on the Privy Council before they became members of it. You know who was a great person who did it? A former Prime Minister of Jamaica. His name was P.J. Patterson. He actually resigned because he had his strong feelings about the colonial roots and colonialism. So again, I come back, lie, cry, and mama guy. The double standards that this government keeps propagating. A general election is coming. We know that. We know that when you see the start now coming to pave road, I want to give out hogs, all these things to fool you again. As I always tell you, whatever they give you, take it. But when you go in that voting booth to vote, only you and your God knows where you put that X. And if I had to tell you and remind you, you put your X next to the rising sun. Next to the rising sun. Don't get fooled up this time. Don't get chained up. They will come with all kinds of promises now. And again, after you vote for them. So guess what? JJ mentioned it. Barry talks of it all the time because he's our public utility shadow about the increase in the water rates, the increase in tea and tech rates, right? And they're holding and they're holding. How Barry puts it, he said, wait, dirty, wait. Wait, dirty, wait. So they say, no, well, 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 hold, hold, hold. And the day you put them back in office, everything will rise. Don't get fooled, don't get cheated up. Property tax too. The property tax too. So they're saying from September, right? Property tax. Something curious happened, or curious, curious, Damien, in the parliament. They came to the parliament with the property tax to say they're decreasing it from 3% to 2%. So they gave the minister in Bert a power in that same law that he could vary that at any time. You know what vary mean? Change it. You think he coming to change it down? He going to do what? Change it up. Don't get chained up. And then he told the parliament, he says that he will put a ceiling of 
This happened in the parliament. I'm sorry tonight, Kevin had a little computer problem because we had the video, but we put it out on the social media. He told the Senate that he will phase it, not out, phase it in, and he'll cap it at 10%. So don't get shame up, he come to give you a blight. So you're taking it from three to two. But guess what? I have a power now to phase it. And I'll cap it at 10%. Yes, Tim? He, yes, and now he doesn't have to come back to Parliament to raise it again, eh? Or to drop it. He doesn't have to come to the full Parliament. No. He gave himself that power within that last piece of law that he changed. So I said, general election is coming. Every party is out there on the hustings. Hundreds of thousands of you will soon get to vote. We in the UNC have been reporting to you. That is no secret. We have been right here like an open book in front of you, week after week, month after month, year after year. We have been giving you the plain truth and nothing but the truth without dressing. You already know what we have been campaigning on. You know it because you've all seen and lived it. We've been campaigning, as I say, on the simple truth. Whether you have a road or not, whether thousands of young men are being driven to murder or being murdered, whether young women are being raped and battered or not, whether it will flood by you soon, wash away your belongings or not, whether you are happy with your quality of life or not, whether the healthcare system is serving you well or not. And Dr. Rishi gave us some really startling information here tonight with the healthcare system. This is how we have been campaigning all these years. I dare anyone in this country to tell me we have not relentlessly told you the complete and transparent truth about everything affecting your life, your daily lives. Our campaign has been simply about the plain truth. We tell it from a podium with a backdrop, some lights, a few plants, and a hole. No big production, no cosmetics to cover stuff up. We campaign on the plain truth that you have been living and seeing with your own eyes. I want to remind you of the truth you know and what we have been campaigning on. We provided the best personal safety and security you've ever had. We delivered the best GDP ever. We deliver the best foreign direct investment ever. We deliver the best forex system ever. We gave you the best universal health care ever. We deliver the best education resources in the history of our country, thanks to the help of Dr. Tim Gopi Singh then with us in Parliament. I said we gave you the best health care then, thanks to Dr. Boda of the Southwest, thanks to Dr. Fuad Khan, our Minister of Health. <clears throat> We gave you the best roads you ever had. We have had the best energy policies, thanks to Minister Kevin Ramnarain, former Minister of Energy. And of course, quiet around here, Ramadar Singh also helped us a lot in the energy sector. Um, we gave you the best sporting policies, thanks to then Minister Anil Roberts. We gave you the best sporting, as I say, stadium resources. We delivered the best wage resolutions ever in this country, thanks to MP Indar Singh. They can't settle any wage negotiations now, but we settled, how much is it? 143. 143 wage negotiations we settled when we were in government. As I said earlier, we are going into an election. You as voters have one main question. It is, why should I vote for you? And my answer and our answer is very simple, honest and true. The UN will make sure you live your best life after the election. You live your best life. And that is what everybody wants, is to live their best life. And I tell you tonight, the UNC is your best life guarantee. Only under the UNC are you guaranteed the best life. The PNM will campaign on what? Lie, cry, and mama guy. Don't get chained up and don't get fooled, I ask you. 
I intend to speak about crime today, but I, several of my colleagues have spoken. But we know the situation is horrendous, and the Prime Minister persists with this clueless, hopeless Minister of National Security. We see all the headlines, and we have plans as well to give you a safer Trinidad and Tobago once you cast your vote to put the UNC into government. So we've been sharing some of those plans. I will do it another day and repeat. Us is now using extortion. I think Arnold Ram MP spoke a bit about this. Criminals are using arson in addition to murder as a means of extorting business people. Multiple times the issue of extortion has been raised by myself, by others, and the business community. The crime continues to increase daily with no action being taken by government. The Express Editorial, 5th April, Sorry, Express Editorial, the 4th April, headline, Arsonists Adding to Crime Fears. Arsonists Adding to Crime Fears. That editorial sums up this new terror. I quote from that. Yesterday morning's fire at HSM Marketing Company Limited follows an arson attack that killed two people in Kovo. These two follow Last November's mystery blaze at the licensed office headquarters in Kearney. In each of these, it appears the fires were deliberately started, adding fire bombing to the criminal, criminal methodologies that have wrapped TNT in a tight grip. Again, the government has lost control of security in this country. Criminals are locking people in their homes, burning them to death. And again, why is nothing being done? Why is the government protecting criminals and not law-abiding citizens? Guns for criminals. Guns for criminals, you know. But when we say give guns to law-abiding citizens, they say no. But the criminals out there with the guns terrorizing your life. Again, mama guy for law-abiding citizens. I just want to share one more thing when we deal with the um, national security architecture in Trinidad and Tobago. Murder and extortion, they continue. Crime at high sun. I think MP Ram told me it was about 155 murders as of last night. Maybe by today, I hope not anymore to add to that list. The SSA scandal will only get bigger. The information that has come to me is incredible. Heinz and Rowley cannot escape responsibility for this scandal. The government has hijacked the SSA equipment. They have given it to operatives in the TTPS to do their bidding. There's an article in the Trinidad Guardian, March 26. As the probe into SSA continues, TTPS spy units operation challenged. Again, this is the Guardian of March 26. I quote from that. As the probe into the SSA intensifies, Focus is now being turned to another spy unit, this time one operating within the TTPS. I'm quoting still. The unit known as the Research and Analytical Unit reports only to the special branch and falls under the remit of the Minister of National Security. It is headed by one Corporal Brent Clement. Remember that name. I'll come back to it in a second. Corporal Brent Clement. The article continues, the RAU, which is equipped with cameras and intercept equipment, is heavily supported with training and equipment by a foreign government, sources reveal. Continuing, sources noted that there was friction between the RAU's Clement and suspended SSA director best over roles and functions of both entities. Now, a couple of Years back, I raised this name, Corporal what? Um, Brent, not Thomas, Brent Clement. Brent Thomas is another fiasco by itself. Um, Corporal Brent Clement. Okay, let me find back the next story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tuesday, 26 April 2022. Headline. Kamala to the Prime Minister, 
clarify new claims of predator spyware article in the newsday i quote my words reported in that paper in 2022 almost two years ago april 2022 opposition leader kamala prasad bisasas challenged the prime minister to get his story right saying every time he speaks about israeli created spyware pegasus designed to hack computers and mobile devices to retrieve citizens data he contradicts himself the story continues she also questioned the landing of an israeli plane during the lockdown of our borders and the purpose of its passengers who she said never left the shores never left her. at that time they had they landed here israeli plane passengers never left this is back in 22 i'm saying this she linked their presence with a two day cyber software malware and interception training event for members of the security forces hand picked by the pnm she again called on hines to explain the role of a pc clement same fella brent clement in the inception interception of communications under the amended act of 2020 which was passed with a simple majority in spite of objections this is the same officer clement about whom i alerted the country in 2022 and he's now exposed again in 2024 in 2022 rowley claimed that the illegal spine was false we hear about cry lion mama guy it was false and here they are exposed two years later they have begun fighting amongst themselves the truth has been exposed and i am proven to have been correct the truth came out regarding the spy union within the ttps eventually you know the courts will have to decide on these matters while i told the country the truth about the illegal spy by this government in 2022 many fell for the pnm's lie cry and mamagai and didn't believe it now in 2024 all is being exposed final point and i couldn't let this pass because i'm a lawyer and i have a great respect for the rule of law as being the foundation stone of a democracy and of freedom and rights the judiciary the judiciary the supreme court is the guardian of our constitution they have a constitutional duty to uphold rights and the government has been undermining our democracy the prime minister himself launched a dangerous attack on the judges of our country every constitutional republic including ours is governed by a principle known as the separation of powers remember these words separation of powers this ensures that state power is not concentrated in the hands of a few this ensures that state power is distributed and not concentrated in the hands of a chosen few. The arms of the state are supposed to act as a check and balance of each other. So parliament makes the laws as one arm of the state in the separation of powers. The judiciary interprets and enforces those laws. The executive, which is a government, they administer these laws. The judiciary's role is to resolve disputes including those between individuals and against or for the state the courts have a very important role in limiting abuse of power by government any responsible government has a duty to accept the court's rulings and to stay within the law and respect rights so i was very concerned the prime minister's recent statement as reported in the newsday on 27 march under the headline Rowley judge went overboard in criticism criticisms of the Commissioner of Police judge went overboard that report quotes Prime Minister Rowley as chiding and I quote activist judges who act as though they could make policy and guide public servants on what to do that statement was given in relation to a recent judgment by the High Court in a matter brought against the commission of police over a businessman's seven year wait to obtain a firearm user's license since then one high court judge anonymously has publicly stated that the prime minister's comments were odd and inappropriate 
and that there was no trespass into the role of the executive or parliament by the judge in question offering suggestions for review of policy. Now you may think this is not important to you until one day you end up in a courthouse and the long arm of this government reaches in that to decide a case for you or against you. We must leave the judiciary to their job. And when you don't agree with the judgment, what do you have? You have the appeal court. And after that, God willing and thanks to the UNC, you could go to the Privy Council. You could take that to the Privy Council. So if you don't like the judgment, don't cost the judge. Don't attack the judge. You have a next step. You can appeal and then, thanks to the UNC, you could appeal again to the Privy Council. So there could be restrained and respectful disagreement with the judge's ruling, that's okay. But frontal crasp and unsubstantiated verbal assaults in the public domain will only undermine confidence in the administration of justice. A judge should not be labeled as an activist simply because he makes respectful suggestions, he's decided a matter against the state. As I said, you could always appeal. What is even more worrying in this matter is the fact that the Prime Minister said that it is a cabinet. Mr. Rowley, I know your, um, your, your AG really is a lie more. He don't really know the law. And you fired your last AG, maybe you know why. But you don't know the law, so you better get some lawyers. Let me advise you. Your comment is totally wrong in law. The Prime Minister said that it is a cabinet that sets the policy for the granting of firearm user's license. The Prime Minister said, the same day buffing up the judge, he said, it is a cabinet. Boy, will that get me real frightened. That really is frightening. When is the cabinet could decide I'm giving you, I'm giving you, I'm not giving you, I don't like your face. And you see you, you're wearing yellow, sorry, none for you. None for you. Dangerous statements made by the Prime Minister. He does not understand the law. Prime Minister, go and look at the Firearms Act. Chapter 1601 of the Firearms Act, where in section 17 of that act it states very clearly it is a commissioner of police who has the sole discretion to issue a firearm user's license. So if it is that you now tell any commissioner what to do and not to do, and if some people believe Gary Griffith, Gary said that they were trying to influence him uh, in terms of who to give and not to give and so on, but it is clear in law, it is the commissioner of police who has the sole, the only discretion to issue FULs. Tonight, I ask Mr. Rowley, are you now alluding to an unspoken arrangement between the government and the commissioner of police in which the government has a say as to who gets these licenses? I call on the police commissioner to clear up any doubts since the independent, independence of that supposedly independent public office is now in question. Commissioner, please clear up this statement made by the Prime Minister. You are the functionary, you are the person. Come out and say no. Come out and say no. As I close, we miss you all for a little bit when we were off on the other things, um, this one-to-one -one interface. So I'm sure you miss us too. And we intend to continue next week. We shall be in the Maruga Tableland constituency on the 15th. And thereafter, we will be in um, Princess Town on the 22nd. So those are our meetings as we go forward, and we'll advise you of the others. As you know, um, nominations for general elections closes on Wednesday, the 11th of Thursday. No. I have Wednesday in my brain because I want to speak about Wednesday. Thursday, 11th, okay? Um, Wednesday, the 11th, Wednesday, the 10th, it's Eid. It's a public holiday. So you, you will not be able to come to the office on that day because we respect our religious holidays. So I want to just advise, take notice, and I'll ask the General Secretary Chairman to please put it up on all our groups on Facebook and so on. We will extend the hours on... Tuesday, Tuesday, which is tomorrow, Tuesday to 6 p.m. Wednesday, we observe the Eid celebrations. And Thursday, the 11th, we will extend the hour to 6 p.m.
Did I get it clear? So we're dealing with tomorrow, Tuesday. We are celebrating Eid on Wednesday. And on Thursday, we extend the hours for the filing of nominations. So please take notice that that will apply. So as I said before, we have listened to you. We have heard you. And now as we go into this election, there is only one way to say what you have all asked for again, I say it. The UNC will make sure you live your best life after this election when you put us in government. If all is to put your life in the hands of politicians, and that is no joke, no voter wants to put their life in the hands of someone who doesn't care about them. People have done that. Those who voted for Rowley and the PNM put their lives in Rowley's hands. But instead of nurturing the life they put in his hands, what did he do? He washed his hands of them. As I say, look at Petrotra and wash on. Look at the education sector, wash on. Look at roads and drainage, wash on. Look at national security, wash on. Look at workers, 4%, wash on. So instead of loving, nurturing, and growing, Rowley washed his hands of you. He has washed his hands off you. So now you will breathe a sigh of relief. You will put your life in the hands of truth and put your life in the hands of care and put your hands, your life in the hands of joy and put your life in the hands of those who love you and always will. I have told you and I repeat it till the day I die. You have had leaders before me. You will always have leaders after me. But you will never, ever have a leader who loves you as much as I do. Thank you, and God bless. Go home safe. Thank you. So who feel the black? Who feel the white? I don't know. Who step in the morning? Who feel the wrong? Who feel the right? Come and go. No more feel the too bright. Let me jump up. Let me wind up. Like the man, bam.